evening and welcome to our worship on this Sunday the 10th of May, the beginning of Christian Aid Week. There are a couple of things you might like to fetch in order to participate fully in this service, or you might want to imagine them. One is a bowl of water so that you can wash your hands, some soap and a towel. And that's really all you need. We're going to encourage you to use hand washing as part of your worship and connection with our worship this morning. If you want to make a donation for Christian Aid Week, just please note that instructions on how to do this are found at the end of the service sheet, um, or you can find them online quite easily. So please do feel free as you as you feel moved to make donations. We begin our worship by lighting a candle. To remind us of God's presence among us, even though we're apart. Today is the beginning of Christian Aid Week, as I said. Unlike many church activities at the moment, Christian Aid Week is being done differently and digitally this year. During this time together today, we'll have space to read and listen, to sing and to pray, and remember and acknowledge that we are all of us part of a global community. Something I think we find it quite a little easier at the moment to recognize that we're all in this together. We are neighbours near and far who are going through this pandemic together. May our shared experience unite us in praise and prayer as one human family, separate but together in the home that is God's world. Let's say together our gathering prayer. God of all the earth, be present with us now in each of our homes as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. Our first song this morning is all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house. It might be very strange to be singing those words when no one is welcome into our homes except those who live there at this present time or indeed to collective worship in our church building. However, at this time more than ever, we are learning that church is not the building but it is us, the people. Peter calls us living stones in his epistle. Though separate, we can build together into a spiritual house where love can dwell and be lived out in our everyday actions. So let us sing, let, it, let us build a house. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong. See 
you've washed your hands today. It's quite early in the morning as I'm recording this, um, but you might you might find you've perhaps only washed your hands a couple of times. Whatever, it's possibly more times than we would usually have done it. We approach our prayer of confession and absolution, mindful of the ritual significance of hand washing in the Bible. In scripture, hand washing is very closely associated with innocence and cleansing from sin. It's close to the Easter just gone and Holy Week, you'll no doubt the first thing coming to mind might be um, Pilate washing his hands of the decision over Christ. You might think of others. You might want to go to your kitchen to do this, or you might want to Bring your bowl of water, your towel and your soap together and we are going to say the words of confession on our service sheet which are different to usual but they're to remind us of what we're doing when we wash our hands. As we turn on the tap we turn our hearts towards you O oh God as we wet our hands Renew our thoughts so that we might be transformed. As we lather the soap between our fingers and over all our hands, purge from us all that brings us harm and might harm others. Remove the invisible guilt and shame that so often keeps us from you. As we rinse our hands, we trust in your overflowing grace, making all things new. Amen. And we hear our usual words of forgiveness from God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. 
Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so with clean hands, we come to our first reading, which today is taken from Psalm 31. The lectionary tells us just to select seven verses from the psalm, but the words of this psalm express many of the emotions that we might be experiencing during this difficult time. And so we're going to take the time to read, if you like, and to listen to all of the verses. They're being read from a contemporary version of the Bible. This is Psalm 31. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Don't let me be ashamed. Do as you have promised and rescue me. Listen to my prayer and hurry to save me. Be my mighty rock and the fortress where I am safe. You, Lord God, are my ro mighty rock and my fortress. Lead me and guide me so that your name will be honoured. Protect me from hidden traps and keep me safe. You are faithful and I trust you because you rescued me. I hate the worshippers of worth worthless idols, but I trust you, Lord. I celebrate and shout because you are kind. You saw my suffering and you cared for me. You kept me from the lands of my enemies and you set me free. Have pity, Lord. I am hurting and almost blind. My whole body aches. I have known only sorrow. All my life long and I suffer. Year after year, I'm weak from sin and my bones are limp. My enemies insult me. Neighbours are even worse. I disgust my friends. People meet me on the streets and they turn and run. I'm completely forgotten, like someone dead. I'm merely a broken dish. I hear the crowds whisper, everyone is afraid. They are plotting and scheming to murder me. But I trust you, Lord, and I claim you as my God. My life is in your hands. Save me from the enemies who hunt me down. Smile on me, your servant. Have pity and rescue me. I pray only to you. Don't disappoint me. Disappoint my cruel enemies until they lie silent in their graves. Silent those proud liars. Make them stop bragging and insulting. You are wonderful. And while everyone watches, you store up blessings for all who honour and trust you. You are their shelter from harmful plots and you are their protection from vicious gossip. I will praise you, Lord, for showing great kindness when I was like a city under attack. I was terrified and thought, they have chased me far away from you, but you answered my prayer when I shouted for help. All those who belong to the Lord, you show how you love them. The Lord shows protect the faithful, but he severely punishes everyone who is proud. All who trust the Lord, be cheerful and strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Having shared that psalm, we are now going to sing or listen to the song, Be Still, for the Presence of the Lord.
This is an extract from the long farewell that Jesus gave over the Last Supper, shortly after he washed the feet of the disciples with his own hands. Even though we are now in the fifth Sunday of Easter, these words have a poignancy and power for us to absorb and process this Christian Aid Week Sunday. Listen now to the Word of God, taken from St John's Gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now, in the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hands. Life would be very difficult without them. In fact, I'm amazed by those who paint wonderful pictures with their feet because they don't have hands. We talk of having one hand tied behind our backs, meaning that we are very limited in what we can do. We even talk about them in adverts. Do you remember hands that do dishes can be soft as your face? We are talking about hands today as our theme for this Christian Aid Sunday service. In the Gospel reading, we hear about God's house, which helps Jesus explain to his disciples where he is going. And he says later he will come back and take them there. This message reaches out beyond the disciples on that dark evening and embraces all of us. We can't see the way ahead. And we need to know not only that there is indeed a way into the unknown future, but that we will be able to find it. Thomas, as usual, queries this, and Jesus tells him, and then all of us, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth, the life, through which we know and find the way, is Jesus himself. The Jesus who washed the disciples' feet with his own hands, and told them to copy his example. The Jesus who used his hands to heal and help the poor, the weak, the marginalised. This is the example we need to keep in mind all the time. Psalm 31 is generally considered a lament, but has verses of praise at the beginning and some hope in the verses at the end. The person praying this psalm felt like a broken vessel, useless, discarded and forgotten. The psalms are wonderful for always saying something that is relevant to today. We might all be feeling a bit broken and useless at the moment. In some translations it mentions hands twice. Verse 5 can be translated as, into your hand I commit my spirit, where spirit is in effect one's life, one's very being. In fact, Luke's Gospel tells us that Jesus quoted this phrase as his last words on the cross before he died. 
Later in the psalm, the psalmist says that he trusts the Lord and my life is in your hands. We can see many words in the psalm which can reflect this tragic situation now. So many families are grieving and haven't been with their family members as they die or been able to attend a funeral. But today we need to concentrate not on ourselves, but on the work that Jesus has asked us to do here on earth, to follow his example in using our hands to help those in need. We've been thanking all those essential workers, particularly in the NHS, for doing just that. Many of us will also have been using our hands to help our families, friends and neighbours. This is also what Christian Aid does both here in the UK and abroad. And more about their work is available on their website. You may know the prayer attributed to St Teresa of Avila, which includes these words. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. Amen. Let us pray together using our open hands. God, our refuge, we come to you with open hands, some of us with hearts full of questions, some of us bruised by bereavement, some of us fearful of what the future holds, all of us stunned by the events of this year. Draw close to us now in each of our homes as we place our honest questions and hopes into your open, resurrected, yet scarred hands. God, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. With the honesty of the psalmist, the wrestling questions of Job and the lament of the prophets, we bring to you our questions or our silence. Hold your index finger and in the silence, ask the question that most burdens your heart or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, silent and aloud, for bereaved neighbours near and far. Comfort those pained by being absent and hold close those who are hurting alone. Hold your ring finger and pray for comfort for those you know who are bereaved or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Easter, renew us with resurrection hope that while weeping lingers in this night, Joy will come with the morning. Hold your middle finger and in the silence tell God what you are most looking forward to in the future or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. On this Christian Aid Week Sunday, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums with limited sanitation facilities who are unable to wash their hands regularly and have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian Aid partners working to provide soap and buckets, communicating clear, accurate information, raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring they are kept as safe as possible. 
Hold your thumb as you pray for the most vulnerable, those closest to God's heart, or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those of us who are self-isolating, which can sometimes feel like we aren't doing anything, remind us that we are all doing our part and saving lives by staying at home. Hold your little finger and ask God for what you need, or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for much wisdom and resources for those in local and national authority, for all frontline and key workers here in Britain, Ireland and across the world. Put your hands together and pray for the many frontline workers and volunteers and for Christian aid partners working to help others across the world, or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As we have clapped to honour them, we clap our hands now, in praise of your glorious creation and with the hope that the first shoots of another possible world are coming into view. Clap your hands in praise of God's glorious creation and with the hope of new possibilities for the world. God, in your mercy, hear, hear all, all our prayers. prayers. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
we prepare to part from one another, albeit online and offline, we're going to wash our hands again and say the blessing together. May the presence of the Creator refresh you. May the comfort of the sun renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you to be love in action, even from a distance. In our neighbourhoods, near and far, this day and forevermore. Amen. in peace, to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.